Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight, what I am going to be doing is cracking open a new-to-me game for the first time. Here I have a copy of Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game, obviously based on the extremely well-known PlayStation game, uh, which might be out on other consoles. I don't actually know now. I know it was on PlayStation when it came out. Um, this is a game that's set in the far future where you are playing hunters trying to hunt machine monsters. Um, I'm really looking forward to checking this out. I do have to thank Steamforge for sending us a review copy. I'm really happy to be working with them because they make amazing looking miniatures and really cool looking games. And I have not played any of their games. Now, one bit of disclosure is I have played and beaten Horizon Zero Dawn, including all the DLC, and I 100%ed that. So I know the video game license well in this case, but I have not played this video game or this board game. Um, and I admit I don't know too much about it. So you're going to get to discover this game at the same time I am. Now, one thing I will point out this is heavy. This is a big, heavy. I wish I had a scale here. I got to remember that. Future unboxing videos have a scale so I can weigh the games because, man. A chunky box here. So reading off the back of the box quickly, we have Horizon Zero Dawn. The board game is a semi-cooperative tactical action game for one to four players set in the breathtaking world of Horizon Zero Dawn. Assigned a dangerous quarry by the prestigious Hunter's Lodge, players choose a tribe and class for their hunter and embark on an adventure through the wilds. A variety of enemies and unexpected events lurk along the way, and awaiting them at the end of the trail is a lethal boss fight. Sounds quite a bit like the game. A combining innovative and dynamic game mechanics with strategic deck building. Interesting. And character progression. Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game, offers player a unique experience on each playthrough. Hunters can develop along several skill paths and purchase a wide variety of ammunition and equipment from merchants as well as facing different encounters each time. Will you ride through the ranks of the Hunter's Lodge or accept life as a fledgling? Now, I will also point out this is the retail version of this game. I did not back the Kickstarter. This is the retail version that is available in stores. So you're not going to see any whatever deluxe Kickstarter stuff there was for this. So up next, of course, is Crack the Game Open. All right, so I've cracked the shrink on this. Here you have the nice, beautiful cover. Um featuring a nice linen finish it does list 18 plus players one to four says 60 to 90 minutes of course all the other licensing info i'm going to flip it up just so you can kind of see the other sides of the boxes so you're not missing too much here it's basically the same sawtooth art repeated everywhere um your guess is as good as mine but i, I would assume that the sawtooth is probably the boss fight that is included in this box all right what do we got we have a thick wow thick rule book that that is not a small one. Oh, and the quick reference is longer than some board game instructions i think we're looking at a pretty meaty one here so i'm, I'm gonna get these baggies of the way bonus points for giving me baggies i always appreciate that all right this one looks like it's gonna have a learning curve look at this contents i feel like i just opened an rpg wow Enemies, the salvage deck, setting up, encounter phase. Look at the hunter turn step. And then the enemy step. Wow. Okay, meaty looking game. Ooh, art's nice. Art's nice. I expected that. We got an intro. Font's a little smaller now with the lights. Oh, nice component list. I dig this. It's even showing both sides. I love this. More publishers need to do this. When you show me a card, show the front and back. Love it. Look at these awesome looking minis. Oh, I recognize all of these from the game. Man, those look cool. Bunch of tokens, a ton of tokens. We're going to flip through this one a little quicker. Nice. A lot, actually, I got to say, I appreciate the use of white space here. It's not crowded, which I'm sure is part of why it's so, so, um, thick. No, I'm digging even this, right? You got your character with armor, multiple weapons. I even like that the weapons are on the sides because that was an aspect of the game. They even kind of kept with the wheel thing. I dig that. That, that's right out of the video game. We're looking at the various different cards, what they do, interrupt cards, and so on. Uh, unfortunately, it's getting hard to flip because it's sticking out of a bad part of the box. Okay. They're not sticking together, but it's kind of hard to get the card pages apart. Conditions. I love all this artwork in here. Enemy data cards, salvage deck. 
Now we're into setting up. So I was just showing you what you got. Trekking phase. Great looking top down artwork here. This works really well. Lots of examples. Hunter turn. Again, lots of white space. This actually looks like nice and easy on the eyes. Easy to read. Looks like we're going to have some custom dice possibly here. Those might be counters. It's hard to tell. We'll see when we go through. Looks like you got traps. Got to have traps. All right. Maintenance step. Victory step. Level up step. Merchant step. Alternate play modes. Trading items. Cooperative mode. So I think it's competitive. Uh, the various hunters you get in the BAME one. So yeah, you got your four major factions. I guess we'll call them the four major types of human tribes from the game are represented here. And the quick reference. What a book. Wow. Counters. Lots and lots of counters. Oh, I dig that. The, the Wasteland art style here is actually really nice. Two-sided. Different on each side. For most of these, some of the same. Just looks like rocks. Just a way to change up the terrain. Oh, a path. Okay, that's cool. Again, knowing, knowing, oh, this is already punching. Knowing the game, one of the things you can do is see the paths that the, the, the monsters, the, the machines will take. You can see there's actually paths on here. Um, I got two boards at once here. This is just falling out of the box. I gotta admit, nice, I appreciate well-punched stuff. I'm gonna guess two-sided. Oh, yeah. Is it the same on both sides? It is. It's just reversed. Interesting. Yeah, everything's just like flipped. Yeah, it's the flipped version of this. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, again, here's the loop on the monster's gonna path is gonna take. I wonder if you just hunt one monster at a time. So, yeah, more tokens. And more maps. Let's see if I can not have this one fall apart. Yeah, they're all flipped versions of the tiles. It's interesting. It's a lot of them. I'm gonna make a pretty big board out of this. Yeah, every one is the same image, like kind of flipped. There, we're finally to the end. That's a lot of map tiles. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy just seeing that. They're so cool. They're tiny. Okay, I'm going to point this out right away for uh, like Warhammer 40k fans and that you're going to be disappointed your miniatures are not compatible. Not that you expect to use them, but like your your player characters are not your average. I don't even know what they're up to, 38 millimeter or so. These are more like old school D&D &D 28 millimeter miniatures. So we're just going to take this out. Oh, there's even more underneath. Okay, this is a box of happiness for anyone who loves miniatures. Oh, that was separate, but this is all one. Interesting. Well, to make these bigger models, where I haven't seen my sawtooth yet. There has to be a sawtooth in here, doesn't there? Oh no, there's two right here. Never mind. All right, yeah, check. Cause you never know. Oh, that's heavy. What's surprisingly heavy actually is all the cards. It's not the minis. The weight in this box is these huge decks of cards. All right, what do we start? Let's do the minis last. Cause I'll put a timestamp on the YouTube version and people can jump right to the minis. We're going to start with the card. So, I, oh, I need this out. So let's take this out. Let's take this out. Now, what's nice about this, if you paint these up, I'm pretty sure this will this will protect them pretty well. Wow. No assembly required. So I, I, I I'm like, there's antenna and stuff. Man. Sorry, I, I am impressed by Steamforge's minis. Tiny guys, though. Very small. Detail's great, but that, that's a tiny miniature. Like here, there's a, a Warhammer figure, just for comparison. And that's an old Warhammer miniature. All right, I said I was going to do the cards. Let's take a look at what we got for cards. <laughs> there we go. Not easy to get out of the box. So divider foam. Oh, these look didn't it look like individual dividers? I thought I was gonna be able to pull these apart. Have dividers. So again, people are gonna appreciate this, right? Know what this is for? At least one reason is if you sleeve your cards, there's room. Plus, it's probably also um oh I don't know. If you sleeve all these, that might not work. 
Um, also for any expansion cards. So right at the bottom under here, we have the various monster cards. The machine cards. I should say machine instead of monster. Machine cards. So let's do this to get this out of the way. So we're not distracting people with miniatures. We'll get this out of the way. I'll have to remember where that is later. And this out of the way. And we're just going to take all these cards here. And we're going to take a quick look through each of these deck of cards. Starting with the machine cards. Which looked like they were going to be easy to open. There we go. Alright, so. Very thin. These are extremely thin cards. Like, this is not... That's, that's, it's card stock, but barely. So we have your Watcher, uh, your most populous. And what's odd is on the back, there's no nothing. It's just a picture of it. So you have a Strider, which is one of the uh, creatures you could ride in the video game. You have the Scrapper. You have the Grazer. The Shell Walker. And the Mighty Sawtooth. So just a bunch of stats in the top corner here, which uh, having not played the game, I couldn't tell you what they all mean. Um, so there's a set of stats in the corner and then there's a special ability for each. There's also symbols over here. Yeah, I'm not sure why the Sawtooth shows two different creature symbols there. Maybe the two go together. All right, decks of cards. What do we got? A Banook Survivor card. Oh man, the art is nice. Like the art in the game is nice, but this is new hand-drawn art. Or possibly not new, but it's not like, it's not stills from the game. We got the nice, easy to remove. So this is obviously Hunter's Lodge cards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split these. These are Banu cards, obviously, yeah. Northern Tribes. All right, that took a little bit of work, but here are all the different card decks, at least sorted by back. So you've got the, the different monster card, the different machine cards. Then you have another set of machine cards with multiple copies of some of them and singles of the other um, with different information on the back. Again, the art here is great. Card text looks very clear. What's interesting here is there's obviously questions being asked. So I dig this, right? It says, non-alert enemy within two squares. This is what they do. If no, this is what they do. Which fits, because the watchers are um, like sentries. So there's actually all these different, you know, yes or no questions on here. So this looks like it's a monster AI deck. Uh, then we have a bunch of decks with different backs, which appear to be different regions of the world or something. So, I, again, I haven't played this game. But, again, I love that artwork. That is fantastic. And what we have here is Lucky Break. Testing your metal seems like some kind of encounter deck. Artwork is fantastic. Text is very clear to read. Really liking the look of this game. Physically, this is a beautiful game. So we have another deck, which is looks like different board setups. Interesting. So we have a deck. Uh, it shows different monsters on the back. No, it all shows monsters. So we have different board setups. This one here shows all its different characters. So this is the Karja deck with different weapons and stuff for the Karja, as well as abilities. And there's even like a tech tree here of abilities you can unlock. So I bet you that's what these are is we're going to get the different decks. Yeah, so you have the Nora Marksman. Uh, Nora, if you're doing this one, you're basically playing the main character from the original game. So there's a deck for each of those. So this makes sense as well. Uh, then we have the Osserman Forge... Smith. I actually really like the Osserman. I'm going to run out of room for doing it this way. And then we have the Banuke Survivor. So cool. And then you have this. I don't know. We're going to have to look what the cards are. But these all have the same card back. And I know the game has a deck building element. So I have to assume these are the decks for the deck building aspect of the game. Like, look at that. So what I'm going to do is flip these and see what we got. 
So if you look, we've got the, okay, so these are color coded different ways. So we have a bunch of blue things, which maybe go with the blue nuke. If you look, the, the backs match um, with different arrows, sacrifice driven, different abilities. So it looks like this pairs with this. Yeah, that's what we have here. Okay, so it's not one giant deck you're probably going to shuffle, but who knows? So then you have similar. You have different equipment that you can get, different abilities for the Karja, for the Nora. But then this is something else. No, this is the Osserman. Okay, so those all kind of make sense. So those pair up. Now what we have here are a bunch of orange cards which looks like stuff you'll find. So these are things you key to your weapons, fire coil, shock coil, but also, oh no, these are separate. So you have a whole bunch of coils. Then you've got a bunch of arrows and blast wire. Then there's satchels. I'm gonna run a room. These are all orange. So I'm gonna keep them together as an orange deck. Then we have a bunch of weapons here, it looks like. Again, these are all pink. So we have, yeah, these are definitely the weapons in the game. Pinkish red with, again, some more ammo. So again, I know there's a deck building element to this. So we have various weapons, including like Shadow Hunter bows. Anyone who's played the game, the Rattler, it's going to recognize these, even the armors. And then again, more coils, more upgrades for your equipment. Again, you got like full picture of the bows here. Looks great. Potions. I see, yep, stamina potions. It's just a bunch of those. Bunch of stamina potions. And then we got more pink cards, more satchels, more blast wires. I'm gonna put that here, and now I've gotten more of these. So you, I don't know if these are supposed to be shuffled in, but we're gonna sort them by color. Now we have yellow. Yeah, I hadn't had yellow yet. So another whole set of armor and upgrades in yellow. Oh, there's a ton of these. Ammo, potions, war bows. Then a bunch of Karja stuff. So this has got to be your deck building cards here. Whereas you have different character decks here and then other decks. Lots of cards. Great looking artwork on there. Again, I'll just hold one up so you can kind of see it. Looks really good. Fantastic looking cards. Now, let's put these all back in the box. You can watch that happen magically. All right, there we go. Cards back in the box, done. Now we're gonna take a look at these miniatures. We're gonna start with the smallest ones, so I'm gonna get these out of the way. Here's where I kinda wish I had a second camera where you could zoom these in. Is this taped in any way or just doesn't wanna come apart? Taped, okay. So here you have one of the character models. Like, look at the detail on that. Really fine detail. I kind of wish I had a wash so you could see it a little better. That is a nice looking mini, though a little smaller than I was expecting. So here is another character model. Again, the detail there is fantastic. Steamforge is known for their miniatures and for good reason. Then we've got the Watcher mini, which that so looks like a Watcher. Now, the one thing I will admit, I'm a little disappointed, little little tiny bit, sorry, little tiny bit, is the four Watcher miniatures are the same. It would have been kind of nice to have them in different poses. So then we have a grazer. So I'm only gonna show you one of each of these. Look at the canisters on the back, the antlers. Oh man, they're so nice. So again, we have four grazers all in the same position. Then we move over to the rest of the minis. You got your other characters here again. Osram with the Osram armor. Wow, that looks so good. I haven't touched these yet either. Yes, I know it's blurry right now. I'm having a hard time getting this mini out. And then the final character. Man, they're nice. The fine detail too, and the spear is not even bent. Look at that. Uh, unfortunately, the white doesn't show all that great on my camera, but man, these are nice. And on the bottom, it's got the Horizon logo. Unfortunately, you can't see that. Strider. So nice. And that's the Crab Walker. Like, 
Look at the detail on that. Man, that is fantastic. Like, really nice. And your howling sawtooth. Wow. The amount of fine detail here and just little bits hanging off. Not too, like, I'm not worried it's going to break either. It's nice and solid. All right. The only thing we have left to look at is some custom dice. Oh, there's more cards. Bonus. <laughs> okay, here's, I think, the actual scavenge deck. The stuff you get after you defeat the monsters. Here you go. Set of custom dice. So you got arrows pointing different directions. So that's all those sides. You got a blank, and then you got, I don't know, it, it looks like like target this hex, perhaps. So a bunch of arrows. Sorry, the other way showed the arrows better. Two arrows, a bunch of arrows and a blank. All the orange are the same. So you've got four of those. Then you got blues, which appear to have more movements on them. So we're going to take one blue here and take a look at all the sides. So you got double, one, all three, one. Again, we're back to double. Then there's a double on this side and a double on this side. So all kinds of doubles. So three of those. And I'm assuming it's just how different creatures move. And then you've got this, I don't know what that is, explosion or moves on to a hex. So there's three of those on here. You can see it there, three of those, and then three blanks. So there's the dice. But then we have more cards. All the same card backs. So yeah, we have the cards here. So it's just saying, I, so yeah, we have Blaze, whole ton of Blaze. So this, yeah, this is obviously the stuff that the monsters will drop. Sparker. Anyone who's played has seen these. Chill water. This is the stuff you use to build your equipment in the game. Metal shards, which is money. Whole ton of metal shards. Oh, mostly metal shards. Oh, multiple metal shards. Then, I don't know. Machine lens. So that's something normally you'd sell to merchants, but it looks like it can be used as any resource. So it looks like there's four resources in this game. And you have other pieces to give it. And then, I don't even know if it still breathes. Ancient Vessel, that's one of the collectibles in the game. Ancient Necklaces, Ancient Chimes. I always thought this was cute about the game. Anyone from nowadays is going to know that's a set of keys, but they thought they were chimes and so on. Um, oh, and the trophies, the various trophies from the game. So yeah, some of the unlockables and collectible items, a lot of these were just for achievements. That's it. I'm going to throw these back in the box. Nice box insert, holds everything in place. This goes in. These look like you might want some dividers. Like this extra space might be good, but it didn't come with any. You're gonna want, possibly want some cardboard. And no real great place to put the dice, but you know what, on top of the cards there works. Then we got this to nice protect everything. This little odd separate piece. And then the boards. Now what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna be able to fit the lid on. Because some of the punch boards came apart. So there you have it. What you get in the box for Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game from Steamforge Games. And I've got to say, graphically, component quality, amount of stuff in the box, uh, dice quality. I am impressed. The artwork. This game looks fantastic. Now, I have no idea how it plays at this point. But as far as physical product, this is a wonderful looking game. I liked everything about it. All the different counters, amazing miniatures. Steamforge Games is known for their miniatures, and now I've held some in my hands. That is fully justified. Those are some of the best looking miniatures I've ever seen. Now, that said, I think there are going to be some gamers out there disappointed in this scale. This is not your usual 32 to 38 millimeter heroic scale that most games use nowadays. This goes back to almost the old school D&D 28 millimeter scale. Your character models are fairly small, which fits because that way the monsters don't have to be ridiculously huge. They can still fit on the board and be in scale. So that might disappoint some people. Personally, I don't mind. I don't plan on using the components in this game with a bunch of my other stuff. Though I gotta say some of those uh, machines might be cool in a Star Wars game or something at some point. 
Well, maybe I might steal them. But the character models aren't going to look good next to my other, say, Imperial Assault models. Um, great looking game. Can't wait to try it out, get this to the table, and find out if it plays half as good as it looks. Because even then, that'll impress me. So thank you for joining me. Now, when I do get this game to the table, I will be sharing pictures of it as we play. Because, man, it's so photogenic. All over my social media accounts, which you can find me everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Then you'll be able to find a review at TabletopBellhop.com, as well as on YouTube and our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. Finally, another thanks to Steamforge for sending this along. I know this wasn't a cheap game, and that is really impressive looking stuff. I am really looking forward to trying this one out, both as a Horizon Zero Dawn fan. I wouldn't say fanboy, but fan and someone who used to love and collect and paint miniatures, as you can kind of see behind me. Nice looking minis, really nice looking minis. So thank you for joining me. Good day and game on.